In the same year that Holden's new stations were opened, 1933, came another breakthrough. The London Passenger Transport Board introduced a new, revolutionary underground map. Like the new stations, it was uncluttered and functional. It was there to convey information efficiently. Form followed function. Histories tended to credit Frank Pick with another heroic design milestone. Yet in fact, it wasn't Pick's idea at all. A new map hadn't even been commissioned. It had been presented out of the blue, and the board's first reaction was to turn it down, as being altogether too strange and revolutionary. The map was produced not by a graphic designer, but by an unknown 29-year-old engineering draftsman working for London Transport. He was called Harry Beck. Beck designed it in his own time, in fact, while he was laid off as part of an economy drive. Beck made his first rough sketch, now in the Victoria and Albert Museum, in 1931 in a school exercise book. From this, he produced the first version, all hand-drawn with immense labour. It was turned down. Harry Beck died in 1974, but towards the end of his life he told what happened to graphic designer Ken Garland. It's too revolutionary. Those are their very words. You know, it wouldn't mean anything to anybody. Um, they would, just couldn't understand it. So he took it away again. And uh, his friends said, oh, you're crazy. You know, it's so good. You, you must get it to them again. So he went and showed it to them again. And they said, oh, all right, we'll give it a go. And they printed a trial edition of about 500 copies. Um, just, I think, to say, well, we don't think it's much cop, but we'll give it a try out. And this was in 1932-33, turn of the year. And they issued 500 copies in a central station of the underground. People lapped it up. They absolutely uh, devoured it. And a second edition was immediately ordered, and then a third, and then the thing. From then on, it was a winner. Earlier maps of the system had been literal representations of distance. There had been many versions and updates to accommodate the expanding system, which had become bewilderingly complicated and difficult to follow. This one, by F. H. Stingemore, was the most modern. It dates from the mid-twenties. Colour coding had been introduced, and the details of the city had been dropped, leaving only the lines and the stations in relative clarity but these still stuck rigidly in layout and scale to true geography. Beck's map certainly did not. He realised that it wasn't necessary to show on this diagram the uh, relative distance between stations. What was important was to see what station came after what station and where they connected with one another. So uh, that was the, the key thing that um, was in the back of his mind. It seems such a common sense idea now, but I think at the time, uh, people were really startled. Um, they kept saying to him, well, why have you ignored geography? Uh, to him, it seemed common sense. If you're going underground, why do you need to bother about geography? It's not so important. Connections are the thing. Beck totally threw off all geographical shackles. He deliberately enlarged and distorted the central area the most heavily used and complex part of the system, to make its lines and its many connections clear. What Beck had produced was not in fact a map at all, but a diagram. His stylized rendering of the system was a breakthrough in itself. Had he still felt it necessary to show some degree of actual distance, his map would have looked like this. In order to keep the map to manageable proportions, the outer sections had to contract. Scale and geography are thrown to the winds, but now the whole system can be seen at a glance, and the central area is so much clearer. 